Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, weekly Purple Penny video. Uh, my name's Mark and uh, my lovely wife Catherine is here today. Uh, we do these videos every week at about this time, uh, which is 12 o'clock Adelaide time. And uh, the Purple Penny is a small family owned coin and banknote business. We've been here for four and a half years. Yeah. I've uh, been doing these videos for a bit over three years. I think this is about the 40th one we've done this year. And uh, unlike yesterday, Catherine and I are not wiped out today because, of course, last weekend was the uh, Adelaide Coin and Banknote Expo. Yesterday. Yesterday, so Saturday and, uh, and Sunday. And today, rather than doing our usual what's on in the news with regards to coins and banknotes we thought we'd do a a bit of a rundown of what attending an expo means to us uh, the preparation that we have to go through and uh, have a look at some of the buys that we had from the expo this week as well uh, but we will do one bit of coin news this week and uh, I'm sure that you saw this on the news this week and if you're listening to ABC Radio Adelaide or in Darwin you may have heard me speaking to uh, the announcers on those radio stations uh, but of course this was announced this week which was the new effigy of King Charles III this was announced by the CEO of the Mint and the Deputy Assistant Backup Reserve Treasurer at the Mint on Thursday and of course that's probably why the ACDC release was brought forward today. So this is designed by uh, Dan Thorne who's a Royal Mint designer. It's not the same effigy that the Royal Mint is using uh, but it is an effigy that's been used on some other coins before and I will just say that the rendering of the effigy is probably a little bit flatter than what it's going to be in real life because if you do look at some images of coins that are using this effigy from other countries uh, there is a bit more detail especially in the eye a lot of people seem to think that the eye was quite flat uh, have you got any comments about when this is going to enter circulation Catherine uh, I believe the mint said that the one dollar mob of ruse would be the first to enter circulation and that uh, they would begin putting the portrait on uh, non-circulating collector coins uh, what, next, May, next year, May next year or something. So we will continue to see the memorial effigy of Queen Elizabeth II for a little while. I expect uh, no news yet on what will be on the 2024 for mint and proof sets that will be interesting to see what happens there yeah it does seem a bit strange that they would release mint sets again with the queen's effigy on them but certainly going by what uh was in the press release last week uh, they should have the queen's effigy on them oh look speculation yeah but it is just Very speculation, much speculation. Yeah. Um, anyway so it was big news it was all over the media uh and no doubt when the coins start servicing at the end of the year there'll be uh, a bit of a feeding frenzy when people are trying to get bank bags and so on and such like so yeah they will run through the security um security bag uh bank channels um yeah. so that'll be how you'll get them yeah right let's have a look at some hellos here hello patrick and greg and gary peter uh, Jason, David, Van, Wendy, Adam, Mick, John, it was good to meet you John at the expo, uh, Justin and uh, Richie, Patrick, Patrick says could the mint set be delayed, well that is a possibility Patrick and Michael, right what we'll do first here before we get into the expo wrap up is we'll just give some thank yous first because uh, the expo doesn't happen in a vacuum, there's a lot of people behind the scenes organising it uh, and of course it's put on by the Numismatic Society of South Australia who are a local numismatic society, it's the sixth one that they've done uh, but the lion's share of the work is done by Richard Welling who is the owner of Ye Old Coin Company Richard does uh, has organised all of the expos 
So everyone uh, should pass on their thanks to Richard because he does a fabulous job with that. He doesn't get paid for it. So uh, and there's a lot of organisation going on in the background there to get that thing happening. And then there's the NSSA volunteers themselves, who were the people wearing the high vis or the NSSA shirts at the expo. Uh, again, you know, none of those people are paid; they're all volunteers. They were uh, personing the ram lines at the expo and on the greeting tables and selling the raffle tickets. We're right next to the NSSA table, so we can hear how hard they're working there. So well done to the volunteers. Now, just some thanks personally from us, uh, of course, to Jared, who, despite being our employee, goes above and beyond what I think anyone can expect of an employee. He worked super hard on the weekend, and uh, it couldn't we have happened to, without him. We had to kick him off the table to have yeah, lunch. <laughs> yeah, I virtually had to chase him out of the table to get him to have some lunch. And then uh, we've got people who support us here in the business and at the expo, and, you know, these are our customers and uh, we get support from our customers again above and beyond them what we can expect and it made this expo uh, probably a lot better than what I was expecting and I'd just like to thank Miriana, uh, Bevan and Donna, uh, Gary, Gary H, thank you Gary and uh, Dana who I met yesterday, uh, thank you Dana for introducing yourself yesterday, it was lovely to meet you and uh, Tracy who I believe will be watching later on YouTube uh, thank you for watching the videos, Tracy, and thanks for talking to Catherine when you came in. So, And thank you for everyone who came and talked to us at the table and bought from us and sold to us. Uh, you know, the, again, we can't do this in a vacuum. We do rely on everyone else to support us. And I, Catherine and I couldn't have been happier with the way people were on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great, great thing for us. Right. I thought what we do today uh, is just share with you what goes on with an expo from the other side of the table. Uh, Catherine and I have been preparing for this now for about eight weeks and that means uh, a lot of after hours work, especially for Catherine, she takes a lot of work home with her. Uh, getting things ready, so getting new stock ready. We, we took a bit of a different tack this year. We didn't take anything that was listed on the website uh, because we, we have a lot of problems with selling things that are on the website and keeping track of all of that. And when there's hundreds of people standing around our table, uh, sometimes we do forget things and we don't like selling things uh, on the website that we don't have anymore. So we didn't take anything off of the website. Uh, we're conscious about security at the show, so that means that we do try to take a mix of material that can easily be, uh, I guess, protected, uh, covered, uh, and not uh, not able to be easily uh, taken by people with quick hands. So that means that there has to be a mix of uh, low price material and high price material. And the other thing that we do is we, we put a great deal of thought into what it is that people are interested in, what's going on in the market at the moment, uh, and what's likely to move at the show. And the last thing we do is we try to just take some new stuff that people haven't seen before. We get a lot of people coming in here regularly, and uh, we like to have some new stuff to show them. It does mean that we can't take everything that's here in the shop. I think uh, some people just think we load up the shop and take it with us and everything's going to be there that's here and of course that's not the case. So you know, as I said we spent about eight weeks preparing for it. Uh, last week we really packed up everything on Friday. We took three carloads of stuff down there on Friday. Uh, we were there early on Saturday morning getting set up we got set up just before opening time it was very, got a bit very tight it was a bit bit tense in the last the last few minutes and uh, you know honestly on Saturday it was so busy that we couldn't step away uh, from the table as and, soon as the doors opened it was yeah, on yeah it was on uh, and then we take home most of what we brought with us on Saturday all the high value stuff that comes home with us and we have to get home and do all the book work and tally up all the all the money and make sure that nothing's gone adrift. Uh, so we didn't finish up until almost 6.30 on Saturday night and then we're back again on uh, Sunday morning at about the same time setting up. And Sunday this year was surprisingly busy. Uh, we did 
about 80% of the sales on Sunday that we did on Saturday, which is very unusual. And uh, we bought a lot of stuff on Sunday too, which is really unusual. It was busy right up until closing. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were still fielding questions at, at five past four. And then we packed, we close up at four o'clock. Uh, Jared and I loaded up the cars. It took us about 45 minutes and Catherine was inside packing things up. So we had to fit into two vehicles mm, what we would brought there in three, three vehicle yeah, so, trips. So the big incentive for us is to make sure that we sell enough so that we can get three car loads of stuff home in two cars. But uh, it's not just coins, it's, it's cabinets, it's uh, cleaning, it's... It's table covers, it's... Um, Lights, FPOS machines, yeah. pens, loops, catalogs. It's, you know, there's XRF a lot, yeah, machines. There's a lot of other stuff as well. So, uh, And I, I came back here to the shop and unloaded the car. So I was home at about 6.30 last night. Catherine was home half an hour early and she had to, she got on to making dinner. So, you know, we're really, we're looking at two almost 12-hour days, uh, plus all the preparation and we've got in here at about eight o'clock this morning. And and we didn't have to travel. No, you know, no. There's so many other dealers, you know, they're probably still driving home. They flew in late last night. Mm. Uh, and we won't finish unpacking until tomorrow, probably. So, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a buttload of work for us. But uh, I don't think it could have gone any better, really, no. for us. No. no, it was it was really good. It's something that we look forward to, uh, but it is very draining and uh, it's not something I would want to do more than once a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and again, I just pass my thanks to Richard Welling. Uh, it couldn't have happened without him and I do hope that he does it again next year because uh, if he doesn't do it, I don't know who's going to step up and do it and organise the expo. Uh, it is a thankless task that he has. An right. extra shout out too to those couple of people you know who you are who helped me just get some things from the mint yeah. um, when we couldn't really step away from the tables it was just too busy yeah. and I did yeah. I did appreciate asking them to you know grab some things for me which they didn't need to do and uh, yeah we, we did not get an allocation of products from the mint uh, neither did any other dealer there if we wanted uh, coin swap bags and I'll just talk about the coin swap quickly coin swap bags then we had to line up with everyone else so we got there at uh, just before eight on Saturday morning and there were perhaps 80 people lined up for the coin swap uh, I believe the first person in line got there at 1 30 in the morning and at one point the line was about 250 meters long and thanks to Gary Heinrich for supplying the bottom image to us there so the top image there was the line when we got there in the morning and uh, Gary Heinrich supplied that bottom image to us later in the day so uh, that line you can see at the top there is down the hill and right along the front face of the building there uh, so there were many hundreds of people in that line which was quite uh, quite astonishing that being said I didn't set foot outside and I don't believe Catherine did from nope. the moment we got there on Saturday till we closed so uh, we didn't uh, we didn't see the line so what was the coin swap the coin swap was lining up at the mint and you got to swap ten dollars cash for a, uh, a bag of five two dollar coins and they had 2021 indigenous military service bags and 2020 end of World War two bags and the limit I believe at the opening was three five bags each they had them already yeah. divvied in ram plastic uh, sorry ram paper bags and you just get handed over fifty dollars and they gave you a bag and i think you got went. three world war two world war two bags and three indigenous military service bags okay. uh and that was the limit and if you wanted to get more you had to go back and get at the end of the line now of course there was the usual problems with lines and and people standing out in the sun and i believe some people took uh, liberties with their positions in the line it is unavoidable that sort of stuff uh, you can't complain about a long line if you're chasing a popular product it's just what happens uh, there is no venue that's going to have an indoor arena for you to line up in unfortunately so it does mean standing out in the weather and those of you who persevered kudos to you uh, for that uh, I understand the NSSA did a very good job of monitoring the line but yeah nothing's perfect 
Now, we did have a question from someone before just asking about how the coin swaps affect the, uh, the mintages of those coins. And Catherine and I just had a chat before. Now, of course, mintages of coins don't get added into a mint report until they're uh, actually reach circulation. And as far as we can tell, the coin swap bags are considered to be circulation coins. So that means that the 2020 end of World War II bags that were sold or swapped, I should say, swapped at the expo, uh, they were sitting in a warehouse at the Mint somewhere and they weren't actually included in a mintage. So that means that the annual report for the year that we're in now, which will get released in October or November next year, will include mintage additional mintage figures for end of World War Two and will likely include, will likely this, is include what we think. Yeah, this is what we think. <laughs> will likely include figures for indigenous military service and end of World War Two two dollar coins. Even though the report is for it'll be for twenty three twenty four, it should include mintages for twenty twenty and twenty twenty one two dollar coins. That's what we believe how it works. And if you've got an accounting background, you'd probably understand why the Mint only takes cash for the $5 bags. It's because it's just cash for cash. Right. Um, let's have a look at another Expo picture here. I uh, There's our table there uh, as we're getting set up on Saturday morning. That was probably about 8.30 before Catherine had put any stock out. Uh, I had to yell at her a few times to get her to look at me. Uh, I didn't take any photos during the day when things were happening because it was just too it was too busy. So if you've been to the expo, you would know we're right by the main entrance. Uh, if you haven't been to the expo, we are right next to the main door and next to the cafeteria. We've been there for six years in a row now, and it's a great spot for us. We do like that spot. And uh, if you do come next year, do look for us by that door because I'm sure Richard will put us in the same place again. You got anything to say about that? No. no. Uh, of course, the expo isn't just about selling. Uh, and in fact, this year we bought almost twice as much in value as what we sold. Uh, so it is an opportunity for people to bring in their collections and uh, sell them to dealers. And it is a fairly unique opportunity because it's one of the few times where you can bring in your collection and show it to a dealer and get an offer and then wander over to another dealer and show it to them and get another offer or sell bits and pieces to one dealer and all those sorts of things. So it is a great opportunity for collectors uh, to realise the best value for the collection. And for us, when we're buying, it's quite a different experience because uh, you do get set off against other dealers because there's a lot of them around. Uh, which is fine with me. I uh, I do all of the buying. At, well, I didn't do all of the buying. I do most of the buying at the expos, and I do enjoy the process. But uh, it does take a lot of concentration. And if you did say hello to me while I was buying things and I didn't respond, <laughs> I do apologise. But I do concentrate on what I'm doing. So there's a picture of some of the stuff that we bought, and I'll just run you through these pictures quickly here. So on the left hand side there you can see some 2015 uh, Remembrance Orange. Orange Larks rolls. Uh, in the middle at the bottom you can see three slabs there. There's two 1967 Swan Pattern dollars there, a proof and an unk. And they're in little Annex slabs. Annex is a, I guess a less well known American grading company. Uh, there's another slab there, uh, which is an eight reals, a, col a Spanish colonial eight reals. There's a small group of ancients up the top there. Uh, at the bottom right, we've got a whole group of uh, US 90% silver, some Franklin dollars and Barber half dollars, Franklin half dollars, that sort of thing. And then the bags at the top right, that's the sort of bulk stuff that uh, we buy all the time. There's base metal world coins and uh, sort of... Uh, silver world coins that don't have any particular collectible value and uh, down in the bottom left you can see some coins and flips there there's some sovereigns some half sovereigns uh, French 20 francs 
And at the bottom left there, that little black disc is an ancient uh, Greek coin. It's the first type of that particular type that we've bought, and uh, I was tickled pink to be able to buy that. Is that your favourite thing that you brought? Um, no, it's not the favourite thing that I bought. The favourite thing I bought was for my own collection, and I will share those pictures next week if I can find uh, the other item that goes with it. Uh, so there's a bit more of a detailed photo there. Uh, the coins and holders at the bottom right are all purple coronations. Uh, there's a 2022 poppy and a card, a war heroes. Uh, PCGS slab. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know whether you put it there. I bought a Yarralumla yeah. PNC. Yeah. That's. So I thought maybe you could explain what the Yarralumla PNC is because there it oh, is there. there. It is. Um, so there's the Yarralumla PNC there. Uh, do you want to explain what a Yarralumla PNC is? It's a privately made PNC from 1969 that has a specimen 50 cent piece in it. It's uh, quite hard to find, quite not many around, um, very well known. Uh, it was, was only about 1500 of them or a small number? Anyway, it's, it's probably, uh, I won't say uh, with regards to Donna, who may or may not be watching, Donna's a hardcore PNC collector. I would say this is probably, you know, the holy grail of PNC collecting, but apparently there's other things that, that PNC collectors know about that I have no idea about. Uh, it, it is very difficult to get, and uh, as far as PNCs goes, it's, it's very valuable. Now, up the top of that picture, you can see a, a $2 collection in a third-party album. And I guess the most interesting thing about that is that it was a pretty much complete collection, including, uh, as you can see in the bottom of that picture there, the Mars coin. Uh, so we've got yet another Mars coin here in the shop. If you are after one of those, then we have one. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other $2 coins that go with that, including, as you can see there, a poppy and uh, so on and so forth. So You can see a Bathurst coin there too. Yeah. We had very, very limited stock in store of Bathurst and they all went and I didn't have any and and one of our regulars Ian was at home yesterday watching Bathurst and he really really wanted one and I managed to with the help of, of one of our other regulars you know everyone helps each other to score these things and I got one off Wynyard Coins uh, and that one there is for Ian if you're watching. Mm, it's Ian. Price. Price. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, I guess that's it, that's a wrap up of things. If there's anything there that uh, you want us to talk about more in a follow up video, then please let, let us know in the comments or via Facebook message uh, and we'll talk about those in upcoming weeks. We'll just have a look at the questions here, if there's any comments here about... Uh... Hello Michelle, uh, Ray says Richard and Sue are very lovely and helpful. Yes they are, thanks Ray for sharing that. Uh, Hello Craig. You missed sent there something. Someone said that we should hold on to Jared. We are holding uh, on to Jared. Yeah, we're holding on to Jared. <laughs> it's, uh, we're doing our level best to make him an employee for, for life. Uh, hello Glenn. Uh, hello Antonius. Patrick says, do you think the 2022 circulation coins going to increase in mintage due to King's effigy not being ready? Um, The circulation, the, the mintage figures are determined by economic demand. Uh, so the mint, the mint's the primary job, you know, in spite of all of us loving their new releases and queues and things like that, their primary job is to make sure that there's enough coins to keep the economy going. And that's really what the driver is of mintages rather than, you know, other things. So, you know, despite the fact that they've said they won't produce any 2024 circulation coins with the Queen's effigy on them, uh, if economic demand is huge, they'll mint a whole bunch of them. If economic demand is tiny, they will hardly mint any of them. My uh, opinion is they'll all end up being high mintage because they will continue to be minting the 2022 yeah, yeah. or 2023 with mm -hmm. the, the Queen yeah. because they needed coins. Yeah. And I will, Patrick, I will just tell you something else, which is that uh, if you... And, and we've been doing this long enough now to say this with a fair degree of certainty... Uh, you will get your fingers burnt if you speculate on mintages because uh, as you're going as you're almost certainly going to find out with the end of world war ii coins 
uh, the mintage the mintage is probably going to increase because the mint has stockpiles of coins that get released as and when they see fit. Okay. Uh, Patrick says, "Have you always been a coin collector?" No, not always. Hello, Mike. How are you? Uh, Nelson says, "Do you did you buy any florins?" Yes, we did, but we didn't buy any good ones. They're all just sort of scrappy silver ones. Was there a centenary there? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did. I bought a centenary florin. I do apologise. Yes, I do. It was uh, AU. It was actually quite a nice one. Uh, hello, Philip. Uh, Justin, disappointed to hear you guys copying abuse over the Bathurst coins. That's all right, Justin. Uh, Thank you to the person who left a negative review from down in Tasmania because we're out of stock of the Bathurst coins. That's very helpful of you to do that. Uh, Greg asked, what number is the Yarra Lumber? I can't say, Greg, but uh, we'll put up a scan of it next week and you can see that. And hello, Andrew. Uh, Jason says, what sold well and what didn't? I did hardly any selling, so I'll turn that over to Catherine. Good question, good question. So our expectation was that slabbed PCGS slab coins wouldn't sell very well so we didn't take too many of those and uh, we were correct um, our big folders of just general issue coins didn't didn't really get looked at very much um, it was the baskets of just general carded mint products that sold very well and um, sort of just other um, world mint items that um, you know in cards. I'd that say kind it's of most thing. mostly items that you know are valued at thirty dollars or less. You know, most the average sale value was was quite low, which is you know, which is fine. Um, so it was mostly lower value stuff, mostly Australian, and then a mix of world stuff. Quite a know. few proof sets. Yeah. Yeah. Mint sets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We sold a few error coins out of trays, which I was a little bit surprised about. They don't usually sell very well, but they sold okay. So yeah, it was a bit of everything. A bit of everything. Uh, let's have a look. What else we've got here? Uh, hello, Andrew. The 2024 QE2 mule is on the way, says, I'm sorry, I'm not going to attempt to say your name. Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting, isn't it, if they accidentally mint some 2024 Speaking of something coins. different, mm -hmm. we did see uh, Roxbury Auction House had uh, some of their upcoming auction lots. Uh, they brought them mm -hmm. to the show. They were on display and we got to view a lovely little mob of Roos dollar struck on a bimetal planchet. Um, 2020. 2020, yes. I believe it had been found by a uh, retail worker who was op opened a bag of coins for the till and, mm -hmm. and found it in there and it, it uh, went to PCGS and got graded. Um, the slab just describes the weight of the coin, uh, but I believe one of our watchers is probably watching her thinks. He identified mm. that as a, a plant from Kazakhstan? Mm, or some, some one think. of those ex-Soviet republics. Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, companies associated with Roxbury's, if you're not an Australian Coin Review subscriber, uh, you should be, because there's something big coming up from them next year, which we got told about, uh, and uh, I can assure you it will be well worth your while having a subscription next year. That's all I can say for now. I'm hoping that uh, Scott at Imperial Coins allows us to share uh, that information with you in the upcoming months, but uh, I can tell you Catherine and I were tickled pink when he told us what they're going to do. It's uh, it's super exciting. Mm. Uh, and uh, I really hope I can share that with you soon. Uh, hello, Tanya. And Justin says, expectation of price on the mob of ruse on wrong planchet. So, Justin, what I'll probably do is I might talk about that next week because Scott did ask me if I could talk about that error uh, in one of these videos. So I will talk about that next week and just if I can track down, uh, you know, who, who thinks he knows what it is, uh, then I'll share all that information along with the Roxbury images of that coin in the video next week. Uh, hello, Joel. Thanks for thanks for joining in today. Right, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for your comments and your questions. 
Uh, and again, a big thanks to everyone who came into the expo and uh, bought something or sold something to us or just said hello. Uh, it was, uh, Catherine and I are feeling very positive about it all. I hope the other dealers that went along had just as good a time as what we did. And uh, if you attended as a member of the public, I hope you had a good time too. And uh, hopefully we have it again next year. I'm going to go and put the shop back together. Okay. All right, everyone. <laughs> bye, for, bye for now. We'll see, you, we'll see you next week.